Today I'm taking you on a little tour of new plants and transplants that I've added to my front yard gardens this month. I'm Laura from Garden Sanity and here in Zone 7 Southern New Jersey I'm really fortunate to still enjoy mild weather to get these plants into the ground and to get them established before winter. So let me show you what's new in early October. First up are five new Nepeta catmint perennials that I planted. This variety is cat's pajamas from Proven Winners and it's rabbit proof in my garden. I tried one earlier in the summer and when I saw it was ignored by the rabbits, I bought eight more. <laughs> what I understand is these usually look much better their second year, so I'm looking forward to next summer to see how these will look. I've planted them around my little bunny grasses. And here's the funny thing. I'm actually about to replace these bunny grasses with five new bunny grasses. These grasses have been in this spot since 2014, and over the years they became filled with regular grass and weeds. To the left of this catmint, you see geranium roseanne. I cut it back, and I got a new flush of growth with more flowers. So very pretty. And then, behind the catmint, is one of the little lime hydrangeas I planted to replace three of my knockout roses. I'll link to that video at the end of this one. So catmint loves full sun, it grows about 14 inches tall and 20 inches wide. Cat's pajamas is long blooming and attracts bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds. And also the occasional moth, as you see here. This area will look amazing once everything fills in. And by the way, catmint is supposedly deer resistant, but I don't have deer so I can't vouch for that personally. But hopefully if you have a deer problem, this will work for you. Here's the other end of the same garden bed. These pretty periwinkle colored, fuzzy looking flowers in the front are perennial ageratum. It's very similar to annual ageratum, except this blooms late summer into the fall, and it's much taller. And the color is oh so pretty. Behind the ageratum, you see our very old Mugo pine, which we've had since, I think, 2008 or 2009. It's a really wonderful anchor in this bed. The ageratum is planted around and mixed in with Little Henry Sweet Spire. In June, I cut back the ageratum in front of the Little Henrys just so they didn't block the pretty white flowers. This spot in the garden, it's on the wet side, and both Little Henry and the perennial ageratum, they both handle it very nicely. During the summer, I don't mind the plants mingling together like they do. It's early October, and so you can see a slight color change beginning on some of the leaves of the Little Henry. This shrub has a very slow and very lovely color change until it reaches a gorgeous, gorgeous red color that lingers well into December. Here you see the color from last December. I cannot wait to see what it looks like this year. So here's how this entire area looks right now. It's so pretty and I am in love with the periwinkle color of these flowers. this Mugo pine so much, partly because we've had it for so long. 
I probably should be mad at this garlic chive flower appearing within the Mugo, but this morning, I think it just looks so pretty. So here's our hedge of red twig dogwoods and yellow twig dogwoods. Back in early August, I did a video on cutting these back just to keep them tidy, and I'll link to that video at the end of this one too. The leaves are still green, providing a wonderful background to all of the plants in this garden bed. How I love my knockout roses. I did have to remove one of the knockouts because it had rose rosette disease. So in its place, I planted a Mr. Bowling Ball shrub. It's a small arborvitae. I love this pretty blue-green color and how it'll stand out in the winter, along with the evergreen candy tuft in front of it. And what happens when I film early in the morning? I catch sleepy bees just waking up. In the center bed, these rabbit-eaten annuals had to go. I replaced them with Autumn Fire Sedum, a gorgeous long-blooming perennial, which looks great next to this orange rocket Barbary. The flowers appear in late summer and continue into the fall. It's early October and they look so pretty. Autumn Fire is an improved version of Autumn Joy Sedum. It doesn't mean Autumn Joy is bad, and sometimes it bothers me when the plant developers will say such things, as it makes you feel like if you have Autumn Joy in your garden, you've somehow got an inferior plant. You don't. The differences are that Autumn Fire grows to a larger size, has larger flower heads, the color is a bit more red, and it's longer blooming. Both Autumn Fire and Autumn Joy are indeed rabbit resistant. On the other side of the same center bed, I did the exact same thing, and the Autumn Fire looks great. This piglet grass is so pretty. I love the way it looks with the little lime hydrangeas and the winter gem boxwood. In a previous video, I showed you these two other grasses, same ones, that I wanted to move. They just weren't needed in this area any longer. So I dug them up and I transplanted them to another area I'll show you in a moment. There's so much more room now. And I just love the way this piglet looks on the corner. When I dug up the piglet grasses, I divided them before transplanting them. And here's where they are now. I love this color and texture in front of the arborvitaes. And the shadows that this grass makes on the white fence is really cool. So just across the walkway is another dry area with Verbena bonariensis and Russian sage. I recently cut the verbena back a bit, and now I'm getting an entire new round of blooms. With the Russian sage, I did the exact same thing. I cut it back, and now it looks like I'll see some new flowers. I added this Russian sage in June, and I love how it loves this spot. I have to show you these peach drift roses also planted this year. Look at how they dry to a more pink color on the left compared to the blooming peach color on the right. And they fit in perfectly in front of the pinky winky hydrangeas.
Back in June, I planted annuals among the dying daffodils, but I decided I wanted perennials here instead. So I added autumn fire sedum. Earlier I showed you autumn fire I planted in two other spots in this same large center bed. The colors are so pretty as they deepen from pink to red. Autumn fire grows 24 to 30 inches tall and 18 to 24 inches wide. It prefers full sun and bees and butterflies love it. This perennial is rabbit resistant. As for deer, some say deer avoid it because of its bitter taste and sticky texture, while other gardeners say the deer munch on it. Although prized for their fall color, Autumn Fire's summer color is also beautiful. It starts out green and then begins to turn pale pink before it continues deepening in color. There are hamlin grasses in this bed, and you can see geranium roseanne and a knockout rose. I really love how the autumn fire looks in front of this color guard yucca. And more pinky winky hydrangeas. The last step was to add more cat's pajamas cat mint in between the hamlin grasses. Next year, this will hopefully look wonderful in the summer. fortunate to be in Zone 7 here in southern New Jersey, where I can still enjoy flowers in October, even on these catmint plants. So that's my latest round of new plants and transplants. So let me know, have you done any planting this fall? I'd love to know, so let me know in the comments. And until next time, happy gardening.